Ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul, U.S. Army Combat Veteran. It is August 29th, 2022, and this is your daily Ukraine update. And we are going to be asking, is the Ukrainian counteroffensive finally, at long last, underway? Let's get into it. First and foremost, of course, we have the tactical map. And we will look at a couple of updates. The first is up near the Bohorodichne region. Uh, as you can see, this is actually probably where among areas with active fighting in the past several weeks, Ukraine has the largest uh, seized territory. You can see here all along this line, Russians have been falling back. And as we advance, you can see they've recently seized this the village of Brahazivka. Uh, not a like stunning victory by any means, but as you guys probably recall, the areas of Dolna and Bohorodichne were heavily contested several weeks ago, and Russia fought tooth and nail, even briefly seizing this bridgehead here. So to see that they've withdrawn all the way beyond this forest reserve, uh, that they are not really threatening Dolna, not threatening Bohorodichne, and have also fallen back along this line is a testament to just the workmanlike efforts to just drive back the Russians uh, piece by piece. Of course, uh, where there are gains, there are also losses. And as you can see, Russians have continued to advance steadily, piece by piece, in their own right near Bakhmut. This is one of their operational objectives, uh, probably that they are hoping to seize and possibly create a cauldron in the Sevierk area. Um, as you guys can see, they initially weeks ago had some issues where there was this salient here this large hole in their line that made it a liability to advance further towards Bakhmut so the Russians have spent the past week trying to make advances but really working to close this gap so that when they do push for Bakhmut proper they aren't exposing themselves on two or three sides as they advance so We've seen that Russian Russian gains there. And when we look down to Her the Kherson front, we see that actually the only offensive movement right now uh, officially recognized is small Russian gains in the southwestern corner and in the northeastern corner of the front. But these are pretty minor and probably just trading sort of space here and there, uh, repositioning. Nothing, no major tactical uh, or strategic implications to these moves. But why am I talking so much about the counteroffensive? It's because the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense has announced that its long-awaited counteroffensive uh, has begun properly now they argue that there's been a counteroffensive that has already been ongoing in the sense that they've been exhausting the enemy not giving them an opportunity to advance they've also discussed at some length the fact that the destruction of ammunition dumps of aircraft uh air bases uh, all of which have been unquestionably weakening the enemy now of course, this is pretty standard uh, tactical decision making, right? What you want to do is is prepare the battlefield, right? Sometimes these are, these are referred to, maybe not in this theater wide or operational sense, but tactically you would call them preparatory fires. In preparation for launching your own offensive operations, you use your indirect fire assets to prepare the battlefield, to weaken the enemy, to learn as much as you can about their formations and positions prior to the start of your offensive. Uh, so they're also in a tight spot because of course they discuss that the uh, Russian forces in the south are rather powerful and have been built up over a long time. And this is true. There's a lot of Russian forces camped out there. It has been no secret that Ukraine wants to engage their counteroffensive in Kherson. And it's Russia is going to, of course, respond to this by reinforcing its troops in that region in preparation for this conflict. So again, this is been a long time hopefully the preparations have been worth it again we've heard that this counter offensive is going to start imminently several times already this may actually be a deliberate uh information operation by the ukrainian high command uh 
again, if you tell them repeatedly that the Ukraine the counteroffensive is imminent, then eventually they're just going to stop listening, and that is when you can actually launch your counteroffensive, sort of like the boy who cried wolf. Possible. Uh, that's a pretty sophisticated level of deception, but certainly not above and beyond anything we'd expect from a, a military that is still styled in many ways in the Soviet tradition of deception, deception, deception. So, of course, what will we see? Well, there's also some rumors that they are only reporting this fav this favorable news because they've already achieved a level of success. Some sources are actually reporting that there's already been a breakthrough towards uh, for initial Russian lines. Um, the Ukraine's presidential chief of staff cryptically on Telegram said, Our hair son is ahead. Not sure uh, what that could mean. It could simply be stating the objective, or it could reflect that, in fact, there's been more progress than they are openly acknowledging. So, very interesting to see uh, potentially the start of maybe something big, or maybe, of course, just another bamboozle. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this look. Uh, as always, if you want to see some of the combat video breakdowns that uh, I maybe used to do earlier in the war and then YouTube has kind of cracked down on, so I've moved them onto the Patreon uh, where YouTube can't censor me. Uh, but thanks for my lieutenant to your patrons. Seriously, you guys make a huge difference uh, in enabling me to do this. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys in the next one.